can't stay in the country forever. Pastor Rogers can't be with you all the time. Your best friend can't be with you all the time. But Jesus, he'll be with you forever. And I want to remind you of the same thing. Remember, he will never leave you, never forsake you. Even if you turn away and you're going someplace else, he's going to pursue you because he loves you so much. Remember, he'll never leave you. These children also have had uh, people in their lives who have died. That's why they're orphans. And they have people who have given them up. They have Some of these kids have parents who just abandoned them and left them to, to die, to fend for themselves, like Moses and his older, uh, or younger, uh, older siblings. Uh, just left them and not, not given any care of these poor children to where they had to, to scrabble for themselves to find their way. But God will never leave them. That's what we can teach them. No matter what else happens, I may leave you. Everybody else may disappoint you. Jesus will never Fall deeper in love with Jesus. Remember that he will never leave you. And the third thing, remember he's coming back for us. Eternity is coming. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 13 through 18. Brothers, now Paul is talking to you and me. Okay, so listen, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we will we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Amen. Amen. We're going to be with the Lord forever. Amen. I told the people on the last Sunday I was there, I said, this may happen when I'm in the States. And if it does, I'll be waving at you. Hey, hey, here we go. This is really fun. As we go up in the air together. That's what the scripture says. We're going to go up. We're going to see him. He is coming back. And it could be right now. You ready? Yes. Are you ready if he comes right now? Yes. I'm ready. Matthew 24, verse 42. Somebody's looking up scriptures really fast. Matthew 24, verse 42 says this, therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. You ready? Anytime. I get up in the morning and go, could be today, could be now. Go to bed at night, could be tonight. What if it comes when we're sleeping? Are you ready? Yes. Be ready. Yes. Be ready. You don't know when he's coming. John 14, verses 2 and 3. <laughs> <coughs> In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Who's going? Jesus. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Right now, Jesus is building a place for you. When I was talking to the people in Budaka about this, the church on my last Sunday, I said, how many of you have seen the building go up for the children? And it's, by the way, the building for the, new ch for the children is one of the most beautiful buildings in all of the <clears throat> Now, those of you who saw the picture, you would not think it was a beautiful building compared to the buildings here. But there, it is beautiful. And I said, how many of you have seen that? And they all started raising their hands. And I said, Jesus is building right now. Just as you watch that building be built, he's building something for you right now in heaven. All of you. God's building a house for you. You want to live in a new house? Would that be fun? Yes. With Jesus forever? Yes. He's preparing it, and he's going to come for you. I want him to take me. How about you? I want to go when he comes. So three things so far. Fall deeper in love with Jesus. Remember he'll never leave you. Remember he's coming back for us. Eternity is coming. And the fourth thing, love each other. First John chapter 3. Verses 11 and 16. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. 
Yes. Love one another. This is the agape love of God. It is impossible to love this way without being in relationship with God. You cannot love with agape love without God. Love each other and lay down your lives for each other. I want to show you a, a picture of uh, some of our boys washing. This is how we wash there. So they, they fill basins. We don't have washing machines. So we don't have steady enough electricity or running water. So you put water in a basin, and then you start to, to uh, scrub the things. You scrub them against your um, wrist. And they, these are jeans. These are really hard to get clean. So you put them on a bench, and you scrub them with a, a scrub brush. And so these boys are serving each other and doing their own laundry. They serve the younger children there. So they serve each other. We have a Wujwak Hero right now. It has a, a leg extender, a metal piece in his leg. And so every day his sheets have to be washed so that he doesn't get any infection or anything. And these boys will wash his sheets uh, for him. And he, he said to them, now, I want to give you my allowance for doing this. And they say, nope, we're doing this because we love you. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. Yes. The next picture. Shows a race, that's supposed to race. So we have all the kids down for Christmas, and the boys one night, the girls another. And we had the girls the first night, and I discovered that I, I was going to read books with them while Abby was doing something outside with them. And I discovered that I need them to go run someplace before they sit down for books, because they were all hyper, OK? So I made the boys the next day. I learned my lesson. So I made the boys go run, and had to run from our house, where we are uh, I'm standing, down. That's our kitchen the building way down there, down to the orphanage, and then run back. And so the first group of boys that went was our older boys, and Mutual Hero was in the group, and he can't run very well. He's on crutches, he can't run very well. So the next picture shows him, he's coming back, he doesn't have his crutches with him. Can you see the thing kind of sticking out of his leg? That's the, it's a great big contraption that comes out of his leg. That's good for him. And um, David's a really fast runner, and David was almost done, he turned around and saw Mutual Hero, and he went back. And Randy, he chose to not win the race. And he went back and ran with his friend. I was so touched by that that there's a little boy laying down his life for his friend. And that's what we're called to do to lay down our lives for each other. Now, I want you to turn to somebody sitting next to you and say, I'm going to lay down my life for you. Go ahead. You don't know how that's going to happen. Are you willing to? Are you willing to lay down your life for someone else? To give up each first position for someone else? John 13, verse 34. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus is speaking to us about loving each other. I talked to the church there about it. You guys are loving the church there in a great way. You're supporting us. You're helping us get going to the point where we're 100% self-supporting. And we'll say, thank you very much, but we don't need any more money. Thank you. And we're, we're getting there. We're getting to that point. Thank you for loving those people. But I want to tell you something. That's calling you to love each other right here, too. To lay down your lights for each other. Maybe there's somebody in here you never even <coughs> considered loving as Jesus loves them. He says, love as I have loved you. You're going to have to know how he loves people. You're going to have to spend time with them in order to know them. But we're called to love each other, not just to love the people way over in Africa, the missionaries who are doing this work, but to love each other, right here. To love each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to show you one more video. I'm going to finish with this. And this is a video of our kids. One of the things we taught them is to be thankful. Um, when we started, the kids would always ask for things. And we began to talk to them about saying thank you. So when a, when a visiting team comes from America, we, we talk and instead of asking for things, you're to say, thank you for my shirt, thank you for my shoes, thank you for my socks. Because these people in America pay so that you have food, they pay so that you have clothes, they pay so you can go to school. And so they started saying thank you. And when we got the, the building completely done, we had the kids uh, say thank you for the building to those people who have sponsored the building. Them. And the money that you give goes into that. It costs about $15,000 to build the building. And 10000 for that came from one gift, but the other 5000 was from people who give little bits. We have uh, about six churches, many individuals, uh, and some schools that support the work over there. And with that money, we were able to build this building for them. So I'm going to interpret, and then I'm going to be done. So let me, they're, they're speaking English, but I think I'll have to interpret their English for you. Go ahead. They said, thank you for the money for our new home. Bye. 
So thank you. Thank you very much for your support. You. I love seeing the videos and the pictures of the kids. Yeah. Um, now I will say that it's, it's a different kind of sermon than we usually get because you didn't say a single bad thing about Notre Dame or the Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> a little unorthodox, but I thought it was very, very, very powerful. <laughs>